Howdy folks, Bad Mark with Mac Tech here, and uh, today we're just going to be modding a keyboard that I think is fairly popular, although I hear most people have the wireless version of this. This is the um, Epo Maker EP84, which is very similar to the RK84, and I think it's RK84 that comes standard uh, three mode. Um, I picked this one up a while back on um, Amazon Warehouse. It was fairly cheap. I want to say it was below $30. I don't remember exactly. Um, I did just pop some blue keys on it and kind of just left it as is, which I don't know if you guys can hear that, but There's a lot of ping in there. Um, it came with black switches. It didn't come with keycaps. Um, I do believe that there are keycaps that come with it, but it just came with the uh, Gatoron Blacks, I believe. Yep, Gatoron Blacks stock. Like I said, it, it was a fairly cheap deal. I guess it was a return, um, but I just tested it, and it worked just fine. Uh, again, I put these keycaps on it just so that it had something on it. It wasn't just sitting there bare, but I never did anything else to it. So uh, being as a lot of what I'm going to be doing here will apply to pretty much any keyboard, especially keyboards that, you know, don't sound that great stock. Although I got to say those stabilizers aren't horrendous. Uh, I've heard much worse. Um, I don't have one right here, but I had a, a cheap keyboard handy and I mean... Usually there's a lot of rattle. There's rattle there. A little rattle there, but... It, it's... They're actually pretty good, but we're still going to do the uh, the plumber's tape mod on these. Um, we're just going to do a basic set of uh, modifications. And I might try a couple different materials so we can kind of see the sound differences between these. But let's go ahead and get started and pull off these keycaps. All right, now we have all the keys off. Now this board does not weigh much at all. So hopefully there's enough space in there. It doesn't look like there's gonna to be too much up front, but we should have a little bit of space there in the back to add something. Huh. <laughs> this one needs clean, but it says that this is actually a key cool KC84. So we can see, I believe, Either Keycool Key cool owns Epo Maker or Epo Maker owns Keycool, or they're both the same company. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but this plate definitely needs some cleaning, which we will get to. All right, so now let's go ahead and pop off these Gator. All right, now let's take these stabilizers out. These are actually, I don't know who makes these, but they are decent stabilizers, or at least if they are the same ones that I've seen before. Um, they come pre-clipped, so there's no need to actually clip them. Uh, we will be cleaning them off and applying the plumber's tape on to them. And I'll probably, since they are a little bit loose on the board, as you can see, probably gonna be applying some uh, tape uh, some medical tape below that so that they can get a better grip onto the board. That's, you know, the primary issue with plate mounted stabilizers is that uh, different plates have different tolerances. So, and that clips have part particular tolerances. They obviously have to have room. So, that's um, 
they're not very stable. <laughs> they don't do their job of stabilizing. Oh, no, it didn't break anything. If they're um, plate-mounted stabilizers, they're not going to be very stable because they don't have a good grip, um, you know, because of the looseness, the spacing that they have to basically give for different tolerances. And that's why plate-mounted or PCB-mounted stabilizers are much better because they're screwed into the PCB. So if they're properly installed, they're not going to be going anywhere. All right, so it looks like yeah, there's absolutely no screws. Hmm. This is a like a sandwich mount. This plate definitely needs to be cleaned. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, pop around the sides here. Uh, that's not going to work. If I have a broken one. I have these all over the place. All right. So here we got a just a plastic spudger, and what we're going to do is just run around the front edge first. There's going to be probably four clips on either the top or the back. I'm usually getting one side off first to help make sure we keep this open. And then we start grabbing these clips on this side. Yeah, usually once you get one side, the other side comes pretty easy. All right, so we have the top shroud. We have the, oh, I would assume, steel plate. Oh, we actually have a daughter board. Hmm. So on cheaper kits like this, it's surprising to see that it actually has a, uh, a daughter board installed. So um, there isn't that much room, but I actually might be able to do a little bit of a silicone pour, though that would take some time. All right, let's go ahead and... Huh. Surprise, this actually has more wires than I would expect. I'm gonna guess that probably to accommodate for a Bluetooth version, although I don't see an antenna on here. V2 RGB V1.1, the MCU. I can't quite make it out. Oh, let me disconnect this first. New button. Yeah, I'm not not really sure. But otherwise, it seems fairly well built. It has gainer on hot swap sockets on it. And it does already have a foam of felt. I actually like felt as the, um, the layer between the PCB. Now, it does appear... Oh... Well, this is a new one on me. It actually has these little metal tabs. I don't know if you can see. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. There. You can see them on the other side. I was wondering what these tabs are too. I figured it was just a slotting mechanism. But they are this this plate and PCB is literally just attached by um by those little twists like so I'd have to twist those and make sure that we're straight to pull this apart so thankfully I mean there's already some padding which for a cheaper board um, I'm surprised usually I don't recall ever opening up a Epo Maker or Royal Kludge that actually had the layer of foam or um, felt um, between there so I'm actually kind of surprised um, let's see what we're gonna do for down here now do we need this these studs I mean These studs seem to... I mean, can we get a bouncy feel is what I'm trying to figure out. Because those studs just seem to be there for guidance, if nothing else. Um, but this... It's pretty stiff, so I doubt even if we remove those studs, we'd get much, um, much of a feedback. So... What I am going to do, I'm just going to do some simple mods here. I'm going to tape the back of the PCB. And I'm going to... Let's go with some EVA foam. I think I have some EVA foam that's just the right um, height 
because really I don't want to go on any of these. You basically want to stay below the ribs. If you go above the ribs with anything, then you're going to be causing interference uh, between the plate. Now, granted, we do have a, um, what's called, I mean, it's basically a, a sandwich mount uh, because it's not screwed in to the case itself. It's just being held in place by the top shroud and the bottom part of the case. So, it's a USB-C, yeah. Yeah, on and off switch. So definitely, there's definitely a, a wireless version of this one, but I doubt it uses this motherboard. Although it has uh, six pins there, I don't see an antenna anywhere. So, all right. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Be right back. So even though I'm going to be switching out uh, the switches, I'll be replacing the switches in this keyboard. Um, I just want to show because Gatoron blacks are actually not that bad, and Gatoron reds, browns aren't either. Uh, I also have a video on how to make blues um, not clicky, turn them into kind of a silent tactile almost. Um, but I did want to show you a method that after spending many hours uh, lubing switches the quote-unquote proper way, I tested and refined a method and I finally come up now this is a combination of 80% super lube grease um, oh I thought I had a tuber oh, there we go. this stuff uh, it's dielectric grease and it's 20% super lube oil uh, which is a dielectric oil it's, just, it's basically the same stuff it's just uh, less viscous um, so I mix it into this I open up a switch like you saw that I just did and then I take and squeeze a little dab on the top of each of the rail post and just a drop onto the spring and while these Gatoron blacks are nice switches they're even nicer once they're lubed and then we make sure it's in the right way close it up make sure all the legs are down give it a couple of that helps to spread the oil on the spring and it basically runs down it like a drop of water on a, you know something metal when it follows along the path so this is I mean, obviously you can hear it. It's not a silent switch, but here's one that hasn't been lubed. Lubed. Unlubed. Sorry. <laughs> lubed. Unlubed. So, you can tell the difference. Um, obviously, I'll be coming back to these to lube at some point. Uh, but for this build, I'm actually going to... Oh, no, not First, those. Where are... Is, uh, go ahead and see what we can stick into this uh, case. So I've got these wheel weights that I like. And because this keyboard is uh, fairly non-substantial, I, I like a little bit of weight to my keyboards. I'm probably... Because these are fairly thin enough that I think I'll be able to put... So I'm going to be using this. This is... <laughs> kids crafting foam it's the stuff that uh, i don't know if you remember from school but you'd cut out different shapes and then glue them together uh, and make little um, you know animals or whatever designs now you can see these sheets are extremely thin i want to say probably half a millimeter uh, maybe even thinner who knows so oh we got a piece of paper there but the beauty of this is that it's going to allow us I think because while these are great for adding weight, um, they also can create ping unless you put some sort of covering over it. Most of the times when I use these, I do it in combination with um, uh, a silicone pour. And just to be clear, when I say silicone pour, I'm talking about the mold making two part silicone. That's silicone that once you pour it and it sets, you can pull it out, trim it, put it back in. It is not permanent. There are other par other silicone. Uh, that is permanent. It's like more like a cock and it just 
it's stuck. It becomes part of whatever you put it on. So if you ever do want to do a silicone pour, make sure that it's the two-part mold making stuff. All right, so I'm going to see. I stick around there. I'm still, let me see. Yeah, I still have some space. Yep, not much, but I will have some space. So I like to do these as evenly as I can, but because the ribs on these are so, yeah, that's going to be too short. That's gonna, I need to go as far back as possible, but I really can't do any there. I we got to cut those stand. ribs. I mean, there's already stuff for it to stand on. Screw it. I'd rather they be flat. So yeah, I'm just using some side clippers and I am permanently modifying this keyboard. Getting rid of these ribs that, again, because the, the way the board sits, I doubt these really provide all that much additional support. And it'll allow me to place these wheel weights evenly on both sides so they're not sitting on top of that channel for the cable. Now, just something I've learned anytime you've got these feet, make sure not to block either side. Um, you can uh, literally break the leg off by um, preventing it from being able to swivel properly and freely. Yes, I know from experience. So, Thankfully, I had a 3D printer and I was able to print a replacement leg that works. <laughs> Actually, I ended up printing too because it worked and was more, it was snugger and worked better. It wasn't as loose, it was snugger. So um, I liked how it worked. All right, let's try to cut these little bits of edging off. All right. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, that's going to be nice. So now I can go. here. Oh, that still has an edge. It's funny, I never got a pair of side cutters until I got a 3D printer and I'm going to say, now I don't know how. I lived without them because they truly come in very handy in many situations where sure they're lined up the same way. As you can see, each one of the weights actually shows that they're uh, 1 40th of an ounce. Oh, wait a minute. No. One, one fourth of an ounce FE or iron. Those are the weights. Now, here come the foam. Now this is super thin, and you'd think this wouldn't do anything, but you'd be surprised. You would be surprised. All right, so I am going to try to cut out some pieces here. Let me see where my scissors are at.
now we're just going to try to get this EP84 sound the best that we can. Uh. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and do the Tempest mod. for that you know i got this tape the other day and i haven't really tried it this is painter's tape but huh multi-surface so i don't know i'm gonna give it a try i don't know if anyone's tried this one yet but i didn't actually mean to get this one but uh i didn't notice that it was different i thought it was just part of the packaging the clear packaging that wraps around it so but you know what i'm gonna give it a try because why not? Alright, so now we've got the four studs that are on here cut out. I'm going to make sure that this isn't impeding. As well as over here. Alright, so let's... This is an Aco Silver. Stock, very smooth. Not gonna lube them. I'm gonna see what it sounds. Just like this, I've been wanting to try it because I just got a hold of them. So they had been out of stock for a little bit. So let's go ahead and give these puppies a try, shall we?
first thing we're going to do is take some of this medical tape. We're going to cut some strips. I like using medical tape other than band-aids because I think it's just easier to work with. Now, some medical tape is better than others. This one is super sticky. And that's kind of why I like it. So, what I'm going to do is, well, first make sure you stay off. All right. Scissors don't work really well when there's still tape on them from before. I have to clean these off and clean my fingertips off as well. This, <laughs> I truly hope this tape's not conductive because it's really nice. I think it's going to make for a nice, um, make this straight. Uh, come on. Or as straight as I can. We got that out of the way and we left over with one, two, three, four, five, six. And I guess that's why they call this the EP84. We used a four switches. Alright, now it's time. <laughs> 